All right, got an interesting question here from one of our viewers. He said, hi, Mark. I have a problem and I don't know where to start troubleshooting. By mistake, the ultralinear switch was switched during operation. Then he kind of implies here that that caused a problem. Now, after two fuses have been replaced and some measurements that he has done, I still don't know where the problem lies or what I must look for. Do you have any ideas where to look for? I hope you can give me some direction. All right, let's dissect this thing and talk about where the problem might lie. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic here. And if you'll notice, this is the KT88 output tube here. And coming off of pin four here, which is the screen grid, um, there's a 100 ohm resistor, which then ties over to this ultralinear switch. And it kind of switches between directly tying the voltage here on this screen grid straight to the B plus feeding into pin three here, or it takes it over through another 1.2K, so for 1.3K, feeding into an ultralinear tap on the output transformer. And I won't get into the difference between uh, ultralinear or triode or pentode mode here today in this video, because I'm going to try to keep this short. But really, when you flip this switch here, OK, you're really playing around with some high voltages feeding to this tube. And when there is a state where this, this switch blade is halfway between one of these connections and the other, then you have no voltage here, okay, on your screen grid when that wiper is halfway between one side and the other. And that may cause a problem with this tube right here. That would be the first place I would go and check out. Okay, if people built this amplifier the way I showed it in my video series, there will be four tubes in the amplifier. There'll be two KT88s on the output, there's a single 6N1P here that is shared both sides of it for the left and right channel. And then there's a single 5AR4 rectifier. So here's what I would do. First thing I would do would be pull all the tubes out of the unit. Okay. And then I would power it on. If you are blowing fuses at that point, I would home in over here on something on the other side of the 5AR4 between it and the power uh, outlet plugging into the wall here. Okay. Could be a switch, could be blown power transformer, could be shorted 5A R4, um, but I would chase this side of it. 95% of the times the problem could lie here. Technically, it could lie with your tube filaments, maybe something shorted there or something shorted um, with your wiring, but uh, I'd say 95% chance it's up here. Okay, so let's say you plug it in with no tubes and it doesn't blow a fuse at that point, okay? Then I would plug the 5AR4 tube in just by itself and power it back on. Okay, at that point, you'll be completing the B plus circuit. Um, so you would feed over here and you could come here to where it feeds and you see where it ties into the output transformer. You could start measuring voltages at various places. See if you're getting 460 volts. Now, keep in mind, no output tubes. This power supply is unloaded. The numbers are likely higher probably not 460, probably more like 470, 480. You can measure voltages here at pin three. You can measure voltage here at pin one and six of this tube and see if you're getting something north of 229 volts, so on and so forth. Do a little checking around, okay? Well, let's say at that point, okay, voltages, you're starting to see voltages, everything looks good. If not, if your voltages aren't looking good, come back over here. <laughs> to your power supply. Check all your components in here. Unplug this thing, uh, discharge the capacitors, uh, just start checking around whatnot, okay? Uh, check between various points and ground, make sure you don't have any shorts along the way. Okay, but let's say um, you were not blowing fuses at that point. I would plug in the 6M1P then and power it on, okay? At least you're lighting up one tube and you're kind of doing things one at a time sequentially. At that point, um, if, if, all, if all is good at that point, uh, then you'll keep moving forward. If not, if you're blowing a fuse then, then you probably got a problem with this 6M1P. Uh, so then let's say um, it's not blowing fuses, then plug in one of your KT88s, okay? Just one, plug it in. Um, if you blow a fuse then, guess what? You know it was that KT88. If it blows a fuse, pull that one out, put another KT88 in, okay? 
Um, if it blows a fuse, then maybe you killed two tubes at once here flipping this switch while it was on and you killed your, both your output tubes. But if not, you'll figure out which one. Um, and by the way, if you plug all this in and you're not blowing fuses, then you may not have a problem at all. Um, but let's say you plug, you know, it, it's, it's still blowing fuses, um, you know, w even without these two output tubes in or without any of these tubes in. Then I would turn the thing off, I'd get out my multimeter, and I would start, without the tubes in it, start checking things. Is my output transformer shorted? Read, resi read resistance-wise from one end of this thing to the other. Uh, you should be able to look up uh, the specs on this, uh, this head core, and it'll tell you the DC resistance from one side to the other. Then check from one side to the center tap, the other side to the center tap. This thing should be somewhere in between, roughly at about 43%. 43% is not necessarily the DC resistance, so it won't be exactly there, but, but somewhere. Check your output here. Is this shorted, right? Come back over here and test from pin three to ground. See if something's shorted there. Start measuring across these resistors. Put a multimeter here at pin four. Put the other one on the other side of it at the switch. Is this still a 100 ohm resistor? Same thing, put one here on pin five. Put the other multimeter over here. See if this is still a 3K resistor. Put one right here, measure to ground. Is it still 220? Walk through this thing. Now, not all resistors, sometimes you'll find resistors that have other things in parallel with them. But what you're really looking for is, do you have shorts in places that you should not have shorts? So when checking for shorts, just use your digital multimeter um, on the setting that would you know beep when you get a short. Um, and you'll have to figure out what that is for your individual meter. But just check between lots of points in this thing and, and ground and make sure that you're not finding something that's shorted or maybe some value of component in here that's way out of whack. If you do, then you've likely found the, comp the culprit here. Like I said, my guess is you shorted one of the output tubes here by that switch being in a kind of floating open space, uh, switching from one to the other for a momentary second. Anyway, guys, I used a very simple uh, amplifier here, one of the most basic designs, a single-ended amplifier, um, to demonstrate the troubleshooting approach here. However, this same approach will apply to just about any tube amplifier, whether it's push-pull, whether it's got a lot more complexity, whatever, I would use the same approach um, to troubleshooting it if it is blowing fuses. So, anyway. Thanks for watching, everybody. If um, you happen to be the person that sent me the question and this doesn't solve your problem, feel free to shoot me another email. I'll try to help out. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys again soon.